What up, guys? Well, Mr. Downtown, I'm Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, November 13th, 2019, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mel, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Radio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Daisy really is teasing her epic fight scene in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. The 27 year old actress who plays Rey in the Star Wars movie shared details about the film The Holiday Issue of Marie Claire. Disney released the final trailer for The Rise of Skywalker in October that teased a battle between Rey and played by Ridley, and Kylo Ren, played by Adam Driver. The scene shows the pair facing off on a ship during a storm. Ray says the scene took six days to shoot and involved herself and Driver being blasted with water cannons. One respite with the fact that the lightsaber props weighed less than the previous films. She says if they had been heavier, I don't think we would be able to do it. It's just really epic. Ray had previously played Ray. Uh, in Star Wars The Force Awakens in 2015 and Star Wars The Last Jedi in 2017 and said The Rise of Skywalker was her favorite to film. She says it's a big film for everyone. I did all the emotions. I did frowns. I did smiles. It was sort of the biggest breath and I think that's also why I had such a good time because I got to do so much shit like physically and emotionally and I got to work with so many people. The Rise of Skywalker will mark the third and final film in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Riley said previously on The Tonight Show that she couldn't stop crying on her last day on the set. The star said I was, it was an embarrassment. I couldn't remember a thing. She added everybody had to do like a rap speech and John Boyega rapped just before me. And I was like, oh, oh, no. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker opens in theaters December 20th. The film co-stars Oscar Isaac, Kelly Marie Tran, Domino Gleason. Mark Hamill, and the late Carrie Fisher. Sonic the Hedgehog has a new look in the latest trailer for Paramount and Sega's upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie, released on February 14th. Sonic was redesigned to more closely resemble his look from Sega's popular video game series of the same name. An initial trailer was released in April, causing backlash from fans online who were unhappy with how Sonic had different shaped eyes and muscular legs. The criticism led to director Jeff Fowler announcing in May that the film would be delayed so that the production team could work on Sonic's appearance. The film was originally set to hit theaters on November 8th. The new trailer features Sonic voiced by Ben Schwartz grabbing the attention of the U.S. government and the villainous Dr. Robotnik, played by Jim Carrey, due to his incredible speed. Sonic befriends a new human friend, Tom, played by James Marsden, who helps him escape from Robotnik. The pair sets off on a journey to stop Robotnik as Sonic becomes a hero for Earth. Footage of Sonic's racing through classic areas from the video game series is also featured. A new poster for the film was also released featuring Sonic running from a number of machines with Robotnik in the background. Carrie Washington discussed on Jimmy Kimmel's Live, ABC's upcoming All in the Family and Good Times Holiday special, and how those classic programs are still relevant to today's team. Uh, Washington, who portrayed Helen Willis on ABC's original On the Family and the Jefferson special, said on Monday, You know what's amazing, too, how, for better or for worse, how relevant these shows still are. She continued, like, still so funny, still so meaningful, it's really amazing. Washington and Kim also teased that there will be a number of surprises for fans when the All in the Family Good Times holiday special airs on December 18th. The original special featured stars such as Woody Harrelson as Archie Bunker, Marissa Tomei as Edith Bunker, and Jenny Fox as George Jefferson. It is unknown if any of the stars will be returning for the second installment, with Washington is executive producing alongside Kimmel and Lear. Washington said to Kimmel how nervous the cast was before performing All in the Family and the Jeffersons on stage. She says there were people vomiting backstage before pointing out how calm Fox was while Harrelson questioned what they were doing. The actress says, I don't know if he was the most afraid, but I was the most surprised that Woody Harrelson the day before was like, why are we doing this? I was like, I don't know, but we all agreed to it because you're doing it. Washington recently starred in Netflix's American Son, a film based on the Christopher Demos Brown Broadway play of the same name, which stars the same Broadway cast. 
Christian Serratos is playing Selena in the brand new Netflix series, Selena, the series. Uh, the streaming service shared a teaser trailer featuring Serratos as the late Tejano singer Selena Quintanilla. The first look shows Serratos singing and dancing as Quintanilla. The teaser ends with the producer telling Serratos they are ready to start filming. Netflix announced additional cast members in a tweet Tuesday. Ricardo Cheveria will play Quintanilla's father, Abraham, with Gabriel Cheveria as her brother, A.B., Naomi Gonzalez as her sister, Suzette, Sadie Lopez as her mother, Marcella, and Madison Taylor Baez as a young Quintanilla. Selena, the series, is a six-part series that will follow Selena's rise to fame. Hami Davia, Rico Martinez, Suzette Quintanilla, Simeon A. Singh, and Moises Samora will produce the project through Campanero uh, Entertainment. The Via said in a press release, and he is an inspirational figure who transcended generations. At Campanero, we've always known that it was crucial for the series to find actors with the right mix of talent, charisma, and passion to honor Selena's legacy and the story of her family. Quintanilla was killed by her former friend and fan club president Yolanda Salvador at the age of 23 in 1993. The late singer was honored with the posthumous star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in November 2017. Serratos was first linked to the role in August. She plays Rosita Espinosa on the AMC series The Walking Dead and also portrayed Angela Weber in the Twilight movies. Streamers waiting to see Disney Plus movies and shows on Tuesday's launch face technical errors. Thousands of subscribers saw error messages after logging in, and Walt Disney Company blamed oversized demand as it tapped into the streaming market with established players such as Netflix and Amazon. Disney Plus said in a tweet posted Tuesday morning, the demand for hashtag Disney Plus has exceeded our highest expectations. We are pleased you're excited to watch all your favorites and are working quickly to resolve any current user issues. We appreciate your patience. DownDetective.com reported a peak of 8,391 Disney Plus subscribers affected by the outage around 9 a.m. By 2 p.m., the online technical glitches monitor reports 769 outages left. The service launched Tuesday in the United States, Canada, and the Netherlands with nearly 500 films and 7,500 television episodes, Walt Disney Direct-to-Consumer and International Media Center announced. Include Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, and Marvel movie content alongside National Geographic specials. Original content included Star Wars spinoff The Mandalorian and a live action Lady in the Tramp. The subscription based streaming service costs $6.99 a month or $69.69 per year. Subscribers can bundle Disney Plus with Hulu and ESPN Plus for $12.99. Per month and Verizon Wireless and new FIOS consum- uh, customers and can get the streaming service free for a year. Wall Street analyst appears confident that the Disney Plus errors will be resolved as share traders at about $139 up to 2% for the prior day. The company announced that Disney Plus will also launch next week in Australia, New Zealand and the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico. On March 31st, 2020, Disney Plus will launch in markets across Western Europe, including the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Italy, and Spain, as announced earlier this month. Forward Today co-host Kathy Lee Gifford discussed her dating life during a visit for, to the NBC Morning Show. Gifford reunited with Hoda Kabi and Jenna Bush Hager during Tuesday's episode where she gave an update on her life in Nashville, Tennessee. Gifford moved to Nashville after leaving today in April. Gifford, whose husband Frank Gifford died in 2015, said she met a sweet guy during a Tim Akers and Smoking Section concert in the city. Gifford shared, the sweet guy asked me to dance and I said okay. A couple weeks later, the same band, we danced again. She added, we just went on out on a couple of dates. It was fun because I hadn't had a date in 33 years. It's surreal. You know, it's surreal because the world's changed so much. But he's a gentleman, so it was fine. It was fun, but then I got so busy, and we're just in different worlds. Gifford says she's the happiest she's been in years and years and years. The star says there's a complete different culture down there. It's a culture of kindness. They are authentically kind. They're joyful. They have so much fun. It's music everywhere. There's barbecues, everything Americana, like when I was growing up. 
She added, I wake up and there are church bells ringing all around me and birds. It's just a different attitude. Gifford said on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon in April that she's intends to pursue a film career as a screenwriter and director. She says, I'm in a state that I've never dreamt I would be. I'm a widow. I'm an orphan. I'm an empty nester. For the first time in my life, I have the time and the means to go and do anything I want to do. Hager returned to Today this week after giving birth to her son Hal in August. She appeared with her twin sister Barbara Bush Pierce on Monday's episode of The Tonight Show where they discussed their relationship as sisters. Hilaria Baldwin is feeling devastated after having her second miscarriage in seven months. Baldwin, 35, shared an emotional video Monday on Instagram after the miscarriage of her fifth child with her husband, actor Alec Baldwin. Baldwin captioned the post, we are very sad to share that today we learned that our baby passed away at four months. We also want you to know that even though we are not okay right now, we will be. She added, I'm really devastated right now. I was not expecting this when I went to my scan today. I don't know what else to say. I'm still in shock and don't have this all quite clear. Please no paparazzi. That's all I ask. The video shows Hilaria Baldwin cuddle up with Carmen, her six-year-old daughter with Alec Baldwin. Carmen embraced and kissed her mom as Hilaria Baldwin promised to try really hard to give Carmen and another young sibling. The Baldwins also have three sons, four-year-old Raphael, three-year-old Leonardo, and 17-month-old uh, Romeo. Hilaria announced in September that she was expecting again. She had a miscarriage in April just days after confirming her pregnancy. She reflected on the experience on Instagram, saying that she was experiencing both sadness and optimism. She said in April, in coping with loss or a difficult time, it's important to be present for your emotions and process, but also keep eye on perspective and joyful moments. She also added, when I get sad, I like to remind myself that sadness passes like a season. I like to, I like to look at my blessings, my happiness, and always remembering that I have so much, many more good times to look forward to. The couple married in 2012. Alec Baldwin also has a 24-year-old daughter, Ireland Baldwin, with Kim Basinger. Ricky Gervais has been announced as the host of the 77th Annual Golden Globe Awards, which will take place on January 5th. This will mark the fifth time Gervais has hosted the ceremony. The comedian hosted the Golden Globes from 2010 to 2012 and then returned for the fourth time in 2016. The Golden Globe Awards will be airing live on NBC at 8, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills. Gervais said in a statement, Once again, they made me an offer I can't refuse, but this is the very last time I'm doing this, which could make for a fun evening. Gervais is currently the star, director, and producer of Netflix's Afterlife, which premiered in March. The second season is set to arrive in 2020. Michelle Wolf announced on Instagram that she is bringing a new stand-up comedy special to Netflix on December 10th. The comedian uploaded a poster for this special on Monday, which is titled Joke Show. She captioned the image, Second Baby, December 10th, Mama's Back. The special will feature Wolf discussing the difference between men and women, gender equality, and why society should be less woke. Joke Show is Wolf's second stand-up special after she released Nice Lady on HBO in 2017. She was the host of the Netflix talk show, The Break with Michelle Wolf, which was canceled after one season in 2018. Netflix will also be releasing a new stand-up special from Tiffany Haddish on December 3rd titled Black Mazatov and a stand-up special from John Chris titled I Am Praying For That on November 28th. Kristen Bell and Nia Menzel say Frozen 2 features amazing new songs. Bell Menzel who voiced Anna and Elsa in the film, discussed the M.A. Disney movie during Tuesday's episode of Good Morning America. Menzel, who performed the hit song Let It Go in the original Frozen 2013, and takes on the new song Into the Unknown in the sequel. Menzel says there are seven new songs, amazing songs. This one has the most heartbreaking song. Bell and Menzel responded to people calling Into the Unknown the new Let It Go, saying... There's another unheard song that may rival Let It Go. Belle says, look, here's what happened. She did it the first time, and Disney was like, should we double down on this? Everyone was like, yes, so they gave her two. There are two unbelievable songs. Menzel added, I sang, uh, I sang them on a good day, which means they have really high notes. It's going to be so hard on the day when I have a cold and I have to sing it somewhere. Panic and Disco released its version of... Into the Unknown for the Frozen 2 soundtrack this month. 
Denzel's version will appear in the film, which opens in theaters November 22nd. Bell previously said on Jimmy Kimmel Live that Frozen 2 has matured with its audience. Josh Gad, who voiced Olaf in Frozen and Frozen 2, said in October that he wept while seeing the sequel, calling it a stunning and surprising film. Conan O'Brien and Will Farrell have received multiple iHeart Radio Podcast Award nominations, including Podcasts of the Year for their shows Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend and The Wrong Burgundy Podcast. My Favorite Murder with Karen Kilgraff and Georgia Hartstack. Revisionist Histories, Stuff You Should Know, The Daily, The Dropout, The Joe Rogan Experience, The Read, and The Shrink Next Door are also nominated for Podcasts of the Year, iHeartRadio announced on Tuesday. Ron, um, Ron Burgundy's podcast and Colin Brian Needs a Friend are also nominated for Best Comedy Podcast alongside Comedy Bang Bang, My Dad Wrote a Porno, The 85th South Show, Joe Rogan Experience, and The Read. Um, the second annual iHeartRadio Podcast Awards will take place on January 17th at the iHeartRadio Theater in Los Angeles. The ceremony will honor the most entertaining and animated podcast in 2019, spanning 30 categories. The event will be broadcast and live streamed across iHeart media stations nationwide. Bob Weir and the Wolf Brothers are going on tour in 2020. Weir, who performs with Don Wass and Jay Lane as the Wolf Brothers, shared plans for a New Spring Tour Tuesday on Twitter. The tour kicks off February 28th in Miami, Florida and ends March 28th in Portland, Maine. Tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. local time with pre-sales to begin Thursday at 10 a.m. Fans can register through pre-sale tickets Tuesday through 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The post reads, Bob Weir and Wolf Bros are hitting the road again for a new string of tours dates coming up and kicking off February 28th. Weir is the founder of The Grateful Dead, which disbanded in 1985 following Jerry Garcia's death. As the Wolf Brothers, Weir, Waz, and Lane perform Grateful Dead songs and more. Weir said in a statement, this is more fun than a frog in a glass of milk. Don is all over his upright, and Jay needs to somehow be kept in line at times, but it all falls together nicely. Weir released his third solo album, Blue Mountain, in 2016. He also performs with Mickey Hart, Bill Crussman, John Mayer, Hotel Purbridge, and Jeff Ciminetti as Dead and Company. Randy Travis was honored by Garth Brooks and Carrie Underwood at the 57th Annual Ace, uh, Ace Cap Country Music Awards, where he received the Ace Cap Founders Award. The Ace Cap Country Music Awards, held by the American Society of, of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, paid tribute to songwriters. Brooks performed Travis's Forever and Ever Amen while Underwood took the stage to perform the music legend's track, Promises. Brooks says, I swear to you, it is 100% my belief this man saved country music single-handedly and brought it back to traditional country music. I've got to tell you, I would not be standing here if it weren't for Randy Travis. Travis said on Twitter, alongside photos from the event, thank you at ASCAP, at Carrie Underwood, at Garth Brooks, and at I Am Paul Williams for a very special night. Travis suffered a near fatal stroke in 2013. Singer who needed to learn how to walk again still struggles with speaking. The ASCAP Country Music Awards also featured Ashley Gorley winning Songwriter of the Year, Matthew Ramsey and Trevin Rosen of Old Dominion winning Songwriter Artist of the Year, One Number Away, written by Stephen Batley, winning Song of the Year, Brothers Osborne being presented with the Vanguard Award, and Hillary Lindsay was being honored with the Global Impact Award. And that is the Entertainment Report for Wednesday, November 13th, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Entertainment Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.